Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I'm Dr. Sarah and in all my videos I review different devices, different skincare products and different technologies to help you guys get the most out of your skin. So I've talked a lot about LED on my channel before. I've got lots of other videos about at home versus in office LED. And today we're gonna to be talking about a specific LED mask, the Dr. Dennis Gross Spectralite Facewear Pro. It's a mask that's been on the market for a while and it frequently features in the you know, lists or articles talking about the best at home LED devices. And this article is no different. In Birdie, the 2023 best overall pick for at home LED device is the Dr. Dennis Gross Spectralite Facewear Pro. Now it looks really cool, it's futuristic, it's, you know, it's a full face LED mask, but is it something that is a worthwhile investment? Is it something you should be adding to your routine? And how does it really compare to in-office treatments? Let's take a look at the device itself and whether or not you should be investing in at-home LED. So here is the device. Um, like we said, it's a full face mask. It's $455. You can buy it in lots of different areas. Essentially, what the reviewer in this article liked, it's medical grade technology that targets acne and fine lines. It's easy to use, short treatment period. It offers different wavelengths of light. What they don't like was that it's expensive and that the rubber bands tend to slip off easily. Now, I think that if we are actually talking about at-home LED or any LED device, there are a few parameters that are super important. There are three main parameters and they come down to really what wavelength the LED is that's included in the device. The more specific, the better. And there are specific wavelengths that you really should be looking out for. And then also the energy density and the power density of these devices. Now, as you can probably imagine, the main difference between an at-home versus an in-clinic LED device comes down to how powerful it is and what it's actually going to be doing within the skin. Like, is it powerful enough to exert those beneficial effects in the skin? Okay, so here we are on the Dr. Dennis Gross website and here we can see the mask. Um, I love this, bring the dermatologist's office home. Now this powerful FDA cleared light therapy device um, designed for full face can features a combination of 100 LED lights in red mode and 62 LED lights in blue mode. Now it's saying it's able to help boost collagen production, improve skin density, smooth wrinkles, diminish discoloration and clear acne for a younger looking complexion. So immediately when it says red mode and blue mode, we need to really find out exactly what the wavelengths are of this device. Here we go. So if we scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, we can see here that it actually does list the wavelengths that it uses. Now it's 630 to 700 nanometers red, 800 to 1200 nanometers infrared, 590 to 630 amber, 400 to 470 blue. Now it doesn't say a specific wavelength. It gives a range of wavelengths. So the problem with this is that when you actually think about those LED uh, bulbs that are sitting within the mask, how many of them are performing at each of those wavelengths? What's the variation there? We don't know exactly what wavelength we're going to be getting on the skin. Now, how much of the 630 versus the 700 nanometers of the red are we getting when we turn that device on um, and we're actually applying it to our skin? Now, this is really important because there are specific wavelengths that have been scientifically proven to be the most beneficial when it comes to things like collagen building, collagen uh, stimulation, wound healing and skin rejuvenation, and also acne uh, treatment as well, because these specific wavelengths actually exert effects within the skin. So this is a really great article in the Journal of Clinic and Aesthetic Dermatology that talks about phototherapy with LED or light emitting diodes. And you can see here that basically, using a literature review of published studies, LEDs with frequencies or wavelengths of 415 nanometers, which is blue, 633 nanometers, which is red, and 830 nanometers, which is infrared. They are the uh, wavelengths that have demonstrated significant results within the skin. These are the most thoroughly studied wavelengths and the wavelengths that have the most scientific evidence behind them. When it comes to looking at using those wavelengths to treat specific concerns, these are the wavelengths that actually work. Now it's really important that those wavelengths are used within a device that you're gonna be using at home. You want to choose a device 
that is actually showing you exactly what wavelengths they're using. And it needs to be pretty narrow around that target wavelength, plus or minus 10 nanometers, um, because it's those specific wavelengths that really exert the effects in the skin. So again, I found this really amazing article online. It's goalstogetglowing.com and it's a deep dive into LED masks and low level light therapy. She's covered so many of these devices in this article and she really del delves into why it's important to check the right wavelengths and also talks about these different treatment parameters. Um, so basically things like the dose of energy that you're getting into the skin, so the fluence and also the power density or the intensity, which is also known as the array Radiance. Along with wavelength, these are really important parameters that you're going to need to be looking for or trying to find when you're thinking about an at-home device. So the most important single factor when you're trying to achieve a reaction in the skin or an effect in the skin is wavelength. And I think this image really demonstrates this really well because it shows all the different wavelengths and it shows your skin and it shows how deeply they penetrate into the skin. So the 415 nanometer range is sitting down here. It's the blue light range of the wavelength spectrum um, and it penetrates down really down to the dermo-epidermal junction, which is the junction between the epidermis, so the very top layer of your skin, and then the dermis. Then also when we get to 633 nanometers, this is the red area of the spectrum. Um, this is penetrating a little bit deeper into the dermis. So this is where your fibroblasts live, your collagen, your elastin, and this is where we're really wanting to exert effects on collagen building um, and collagen stimulation and basically skin rejuvenation. And then as we get up near towards the 830 nanometer range, which is kind of getting towards infrared uh, territory on the electromagnetic spectrum, we can see that that penetrates even more deeply down to the hypodermis. So Dr. Dennis Gross, Facewear Pro, like we said, $455. The wavelengths, like we've said, it doesn't actually specify a particular wavelength. Now, this is actually a problem for me because I feel like there are other masks out there that really focus in on those specific wavelengths that we know have got the scientific evidence to back them up. So this for me is a negative about the Dr. Dennis Gross mask. Irradiance, so the power here, you can see it's 50 to 61 megawatts per centimeter squared. Now this is above the minimum recommended 40. So this mask is gonna give a good amount of power. It's actually an at-home device that I can say is going to give you adequate power. The treatment time is three minutes and the fluence is 11 joules per centimeter squared. So this here is a really good number. It has adequate power, it has adequate energy delivery into the skin. This allows the fact that the treatment time can then be three minutes. So look, like we kind of said, we'll go back to having a look at the mask itself. It looks pretty futuristic. I think, you know, if you actually take into account how often you need to use it, the power, the ease of use, the treatment time. I think this mask is something that could potentially be a good addition to your routine at home. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. I'm gonna give the verdict of as far as at home LED masks go, I think this one would be worth the investment. So let me know what you guys think. Have you guys used this device? What do you think about it? Do you like it? Um, what other masks would you like me to talk about? And definitely check out that article. I'll link it in the comments below. But that's it for this video, guys. I will see you guys next time.